Hello, this is Kerrigan and I have another video for you today. Today I will be doing a review of this book as well as offering you guys some tips on how I went from drawing, from coloring into doing my own sketches and um, yes. So before I get started on that, I do want to talk about uh, where I've been and what I've been up to and why you haven't really seen that many videos from me this year. And um, I'm not sure what next year brings, so I can't make any promises about next year. But anyway, um, I if you if you've been following me since the very, very beginning, before this channel even became Coloring Carrier, you know that I spin wool and this is some wool that I spun. This is a uh, two ply. Uh, Coradale. I well, I processed it myself from the w raw sheep, and I spun it, um, and so on. And so, um, what I've been wanting to do for a while, and I've just been kind of scared to do, is to just enter it into a contest and see how it went. So I entered it into uh, New York uh, Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool, which is one of the larger sheep and wool festivals in the country not the biggest but one of the biggest um and i came in second so that's pretty good uh and i shared this with a few people and uh someone suggested that i get into teaching so i may end up teaching some yarn classes um some spinning classes if i do some wool spinning classes if i do you guys will be the first to know all right so that's why i've been believe it or not this this little skein took me well over a month to spin, to get ready for the contest and to do all of that. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but this is indeed two ply. See the bounce, you see that little bit of stretch that it gets? That means that when it gets knit up into a shawl, it's gonna be really good. So um, I can't wait to work this up that I got it over with. And I'm glad that I placed second. So I'm gonna at some point frame this. All right, so. Let's get back to the main point of this video. Um, this is a new book that just came out. I got this from a fan. You know what, I'm gonna zoom out. The past few videos that I've done, I needed to be fairly close, but I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. All right, here we go. All right, I'm gonna zoom out. All right, so um, this is a book that just came out. It's from Joanna Basford, and it's sort of her entry into a tutorial book teaching you how to, um, how to make your own versions of her style. And um, for me, when I started doing my own drawings, let me show you some of the stuff that I've done. I'm not exactly good. I've been doing this for like almost two and a half years, close to three years now. Um, this is one of the sketchbooks that I finished. Yeah, this is the front. So you can see, and these took, you know, there's different styles and different ways of doing this. If you saw my Ink Tense review, you saw this one. I used this one for my Ink Tense review. Um, this is from when I went to DC, actually. This is uh, one of my spindles with some wool on it. This, I think I used this for a review of some kind. No, I used this one for a review. This one I used for my, um, for when I did the review of the MCM paints. Um, so you can see I've been trying to do this core review for ages. Uh, I have this set and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So um, not necessarily expert, but you know, passable, barely. So, all right. So, um, so one of the things that I struggled with with these books is just sort of making sense of the directions. So um, I will do a flip through at the very end, but I'm going to show you how to make sense of these directions because it can be a little bit confusing because let me find one. Um, okay, so for example, right here, sort of she draws this line these circles and then they sort of disappear in the next picture and you're sort of wondering like how how do you get from that to that and I I can understand it now but it it was when I first started it was really confusing so let me show you what um what is meant by that so this is uh, a set of pencils this is a very fancy set of pencils you absolutely do not need to spend this much to get a set of pencils in fact I'll link to various sets of pencils but the main thing that I would say if you're going to get started is to start with at least a few colors at least three um, colors three grades of hardnesses um, so let's see here um, usually they give you like HB, uh, 
B2, you know, so on and so forth. You know what? I'm going to pause. I'm going to pull out the HB, the B2. Actually, just these big ones here. Yeah, I'm going to pause. I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to show you the different grades. Um, you can do all your sketching with one with one pencil. And in fact, I use this uh, this one for, for doing pretty much all my water soluble graphite as I just use the one. Uh, so I'm just going to pause for a second and I'm going to get out there and just show you the pencil. Oh, I went ahead and I just found my travel set. This is my travel set. I use this like, you know, if I'm going somewhere um, and I don't want to take my big set and I just want to work in graphite. I've been doing a lot more watercoloring lately, so I haven't been using my graphites as much, but graphite is a great medium. Anyway, so, um, so this is the set and you can see that the pencils go from 2H, H, F, H, B, B, 2B, and then they go up. Um, H is the hardest and lightest, and uh, I'm sorry, it, yeah, H are harder and lighter. So like say 16H is going to be considerably harder and lighter than 16B. And uh, I made this up just now just to show you guys the difference because sometimes it's hard to to sort of visualize these things so if you see 2h and it starts here and it goes all the way up and then you can see it getting increasingly darker the differences are much more pronounced in person as well as when you use something like say this 2h i'm gonna see if i can zoom in so you can see me using it really super tightly you'll see that um it leaves a very sort of a very fine line you can do this with any pencil but it is easier to do it with something like a like a two which you can see that it leaves this very light line um, and that it doesn't use up much of the graphite you can see how it's almost completely sharpened back to the beginning and if we go all the way back to the bees you're gonna see a difference almost instantly you see how much more graphite that puts down and um, also how much more of the paper's white you can see with the with the 2H, it sort of it goes into the tooth of the paper, but with this pencil, it doesn't go into the tooth of the paper. And this is also why if you're using uh, colored pencils, you'll see that softer pencils need to be sharpened more often. That's not a fault. That's just the way that it is. When something is softer, it uses more across the paper. So you can see how much that used versus the comparison on the other one. So um, so the reason that you do this is because if you're working just in graphite, then you pretty much are go just gonna have all your colors be, this is basically gonna be your color palette. Now, as I said earlier, you can do a lot of the same effects with just one pencil. And the pencil that people tend to use is either a 2B or an HB if they just wanna do one color so this is the hb and i'm going to show you how you can get these various align this is going to matter when we start you know trying to follow directions by the way if you want to get just a very light line you just hold your hand further out from the paper and you'll see that just by instinct it's just gonna if you hold your pencil further back just it's just going to be a lot easier to just lay down this very light line if you move closer your line just gets just a little darker you'll see how the line gets just a little darker you move closer still your line gets even darker and then if you go all the way up close then you get much closer to the hardness so that's one way and a lot of people will only use you know uh, there's artists on youtube that will do just amazing paintings that are just have all these different levels and shadings and they'll just use one pencil um and a lot of artists will go you know they'll have pencils going from 16 h all the way to 16 b and that's how they'll work it's just up to you how you prefer um i i like having the larger sets because it gives me more versatility but when i'm doing any one sketch i might only use three or four shades in one sketch but i might use different shades for different sketches you'll see once you start doing it okay so why does all of this matter? All of this matters because of this part here in the directions here. All right, so here we go in the directions. So this is the part that I found confusing when I was first learning to draw and first trying to follow directions. Um, it, it was just super confusing. So let me try to take one that's super easy. 
all right this one right here so she has these circles out here um, and part of the delay in doing this book by the way I got this book from a fan from this is my power source but I'm just gonna put this down so that I can better see so that it doesn't move and so we can see it together let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it together okay so the first step is she has you drawing this this circle and the problem that i i always had with these books is i couldn't figure out how they got it from this point to this point and the truth is that it always kind of sort of looks like this all right so i'm like i said i was part of my reluctance to do this video is that I know my drawings aren't that good. So I, it's kind of, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing, but for the sake of you guys, you know, getting a sense of actually learning how to use these how to books, then we're going to do this this way. All right. So here we go. So when you draw this first little, it's not a very good circle, but you'll get the, you'll get the point. All right. So this is done with a two H. So that's the big outer circle. Then she has you drawing a smaller circle and the circle inside. All right, so that's done with the two age. Then she has you using that as a base so that you can have these little circles here. So I'm gonna go a little darker than that for this. And again, you could do this all with one pencil. For the rest of this, I'm gonna use a 2B and then I'm gonna go up. So, so for this, I'm gonna go just a little darker and then just, it's also hard because I've tried to do this like without being able to see. So, all right. So this is where I sort of struggled with these books because if your if your starting lines aren't that good, then the lines that you build on that won't be that good either. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, so we have that there. All right. Next step is uh, this here where you do the next sort of the next circle of the rings with the HB. All right. And then hold on here. All right. So then now she wants you to do the larger outer petals going to the circle and Like I said, this this is not gonna look like a work of art because I'm doing this here, but you can see how this is supposed to work. This is more about showing you like how the book is supposed to work than about my own skills, which are not that great. But for the sake of argument, we're gonna make pretend that these look better than they do. All right. And the last one. All right. So, so now you're starting to see sort of how it comes together. So then the question is, what do you do now? How do you get it to look like she does? Because if you see later on here, those early lines are gone. And so what you do is you take either a kneaded eraser or just a regular old graphite eraser. I love this for, for just basic graphite. Just like my, I have like all of these all over the house. I love these for erasing graphite. Um, so next thing you do is you get out your, either your kneaded eraser, you know what, I'm going to use this one and just, just to show you. And then you just go in and you erase these. And the other thing that you can do though, if you want to, you know, make your life a lot easier is you can go in and fill these lines up with marker. So again, we're making pretend that my work is better than it is. And we're going to go back to that, to this, uh, to be here. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to actually get a marker because I think it'll, it'll be more beneficial if we see it with a marker and then see how, how it all comes together. I'll be right back. Marker here. All right. So then what you do is you go in with the marker and you put in the lines that you kind of sketched out. Kind of hard to do this like this, but 
This is not intended to be perfect, just intended to illustrate the point. So we've gone through, so it doesn't exactly follow the line. So I'm gonna try to get it a little bit closer to what I originally did. But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to try to follow the lines of the of the original. So, so you're using the original as a sort of instructional, directional, you know, that's your, that's your path. And then this one, I wasn't happy with it. So I'm doing it like this. Okay. So then, so now you have these pen marks, these pencil marks. So use that pen, let the pen sort of dry out. All right. So the ink is now dry. And now the next thing we do is we just erase everything. So we just erase everything that we did. And this is why you use, you know, those light pencils, because those light marks are also easier to erase than the, than the Bs. Those H pencils are easier to erase than the Bs. Honestly, if I'm going to be erasing, I use an F. So you can see here some of the lines here are just being stubborn in terms of coming out, but you get the idea. Did you get the idea? Ta-da! So, not exactly a work of art, but you get the idea. That's how it's, you know, that's how it's supposed to go. And so the theory is that by starting out in pencil, then you can build up your lines and your drawing should, in theory, look much better than if you just did it in marker. That's the theory anyway. So um, that's how you follow directions on these books. All right, so now that we have that part out of the way, let's actually look through the book itself. So, okay, so now, uh, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. Here we go. You know what, I'm gonna fix the camera. I'll be back. I am back. Um, so I think I'm gonna put up two videos. I think I'm gonna do one with the part that we saw earlier and um, this one that's just the flip through and talking about the book in case you don't need that extra stuff. Okay, so this is what the book comes in. The paper is pretty much the same that she has used in her coloring books. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of places for you to color. So I think she does this knowing that, you know, you're coming in being a colorist first. Um, so there'll be lots of places for you to color. She talks about her process as an artist. Um, she gives you some info on various supplies. Um, I've talked throughout my videos of all my various supplies, um, some more places for you to color. There is a sample page in the back and then she gives you the directions, sort of the steps that she does. And like I said, um, in the longer version of this video, we would have already covered sort of how to read these directions, how to make sense of it and how to be able to follow them. Um, so you can sort of get something close to it. But in all honesty, when you're first starting out, it's not really going to look as good as you know what she does. Um, this is what I did if you you know, just to give you a quick reminder, this is what I did. So it's not really going to look as good as, you know, as this, but that's okay. That's part of the process. Um, I hope my screen didn't just go super dark right now. And I hope that that's not an effect that you guys see anyway. So, um, so there's a lot of, um, she does a really good job of giving you those directions that once you know how to follow are pretty easy to follow and there's lots of places for you to practice um, right here on this book she does also recommend that you get a, uh, a notebook um, and I guess at the end of this I'm going to talk a little bit about the different notebooks that I have and what I prefer to use for sketching versus drawing versus whatever. Um, so anyway, so there's more, she breaks down more of the different kinds of flowers that she uses, um, how to draw them. There's, you know, lots of pages for you to color. So if you're just a color, not just a colorist, but if you're mainly a colorist, um, there you go, that's better. If you're mainly a colorist, then there's lots here for you to do, even if, you know, you just want to dabble in drawing and, you know, you have no plans to become like, you know, a professional artist. Um, and so you can go through this and see if that's something that you want to do. She gives you directions on um, one way to trace. Um, I don't trace like that, but if, you know, if you want to trace, um, it's definitely a very easy way to trace um, and it makes life a lot easier if you want to do this and you don't. 
Ooh, excuse me. And you don't have the supplies for like a light box or anything like that. So you can go through that. Um, she shows you how to do her butterflies. Uh, let's see here. There's more directions. She also shows you how you start filling it in. Um, some of these directions I found really helpful. But again, if your base circle isn't very good, then it's not going to turn out as good as she does. You can use, um, what's the word I mean? Did I mean a protractor? Circle maker. It's been a while since I was in school, but if you have one of those math tools, you can make a circle easier as well as one of those, um, those things that have the circles already made for you. I think I might have one of those in there. I have one of those, um, in there, but I don't want to get it out just right this second. So you can, um, so you can do that. And she has them at various states of completion so that you can finish up and you can learn from her process. She also teaches you how to do some of the extras, like how to do the leaves and so on and so forth, not just the the big flowers. Um, the one thing that I found really useful, well, it's a lot of things that I found really useful, but her ideas on adding a border to make your thing sort of pop a little bit more. I did find that to be extremely useful. Um, she also breaks it up in sections. So this is the ocean section. It's kind of like the land section and it kind of follows the various, um, uh, the various, uh, what's the word? I always draw a blank when I'm drawing, uh, when I'm, you know, when I'm doing a, a video, uh, different environments you know the the water the sea like i said she has stuff at various stages of completion so that you can practice your own um your own sort of filling in or practice your own base drawing um she does suggest that you you know if you don't have your own you can just use printer paper or whatever if you don't have a sketchbook or whatever you can just start right here on this book uh, I really like uh, either spiral bound or hard bound books. Um, I like those a lot. Um, the only thing I don't like about the, the hard bound books is, especially if you're just getting thinner sketching paper, they get fairly heavy. So I've actually started making my own notebooks and I found those to be really nice because then I can use whatever quality paper I want and they're super easy to do. So she breaks down and so she shows you how she does. So she draws one side and then she uses her tracing method to copy what she's done um over there uh, so it's more of the borders that i found really interesting um and different ways to do different kinds of borders as well as various kinds of sea life let's see here um and some of these if you have some of her other books you'll sort of recognize a lot of not just the patterns but the the style that she uses so there she's used this sort of like a world inside of a bottle for a few of her books so you can see here see. and the paper is nice and thick and should hold if you want to you know if you want to color this in in marker this is the same paper that she used for um world of flowers magic jungle uh, and the Christmas book. So this is all that higher quality paper that she ended up with. So there's not, you know, it's not going to be something that you won't be able to work in the book if that's what you want to do. Um, or if you want to do a combination of both working in the book and creating your own book. And she also teaches you like these steps so you can see how she does the, the creatures here. So you can see that. Um, so if you were here for the intro, you'll be able to follow these directions, which I must say that it took me a while to figure out how all these is done. So it's weird to have directions that you need, you know, help figuring out, but I, I honestly did need help figuring out the directions. All right. So she gives you different kinds of, remember I was telling you earlier about the border that I love her idea of using borders. Um, so she gives you lots of styles of borders that you can do. Um, the trees, this reminds me of, uh, Lost Garden. Was that Lost? No, that was Enchanted Garden. There you go. Um, this has a very Enchanted Garden feel to it. So, and of course this is, this is double-sided, um, which doesn't bother me as much in this book for some reason. Um, partly because you're not meant to really, you know, do full scale exacting color on this and so you end up you know not something that you want to frame by the way we have two of my colored pages framed 
Um, and the paint looks great. The paper has yellowed, which is annoying, but you know, it is what it is. Anyway. So we're almost done. And she has um, some more thank yous as well as a giant swatch page and you can color all of this in. So um, if you are primarily a colorist, there's a lot to like here. Um, if you want to get into drawing your own stuff with her style, then you can't really go wrong. Um, there's not that much here about sort of drawing fundamentals. If you want to learn how to draw in general, um, I, this may not be the best starter book, but if you specifically want to learn to draw her style, um, then this is a great, great book. So overall, I'm super happy with this. Um, I'm thank you so much, uh, the patron for getting this for me. Yeah, so that's it. So I hope you guys like this video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. Um, like I said, this video will come out. There'll be two versions of this video that will come out. One version will be just the second section that you just now saw. And the other part will be um, both sections. And in fact, I'm gonna stop here for the shorter version of the video. So thank you guys for, for so much for watching. For the longer version of the video, I'm gonna get out some of my notebooks and talk to you guys a little bit about different kinds of paper and different kinds of erasers and what I do and what I did for, you know, for starting to, to learn to, to draw. All right, be right back. Right. We have uh, looked at pencils. We looked at erasers, we did a little bit, uh, we did the flip to, and I showed you how to read these books. So now let's gonna talk about the various kinds of paper that there are. Um, first thing is you can always take whatever kind of paper you already like and make your own. These books are super easy to make and there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube. If you would like for me to do a tutorial, let me know down in the comments. Um, this paper here is multimedia paper. I use this paper as you can see here for water soluble pencil. Um, this is uh, hot press watercolor paper and I use this for watercolor. The reason that I use hot press for these notebooks is that there's a lot less difference between the, the right side and the wrong side of the paper um, or the two different sides. Uh, with cold press is a much bigger difference so hot press makes it just easier for you to do things like this where it's just one flowing thing. Um, anyway, so there's that. Uh, what I use for graphite is I use the Strathmore, um, the 400 series paper. So they have hard bound books like this, but they also have just regular spiral bound um, notebooks. And these have a lot of pages in them. You can kind of see, um, and they're really good for graphite doing um, double-sided graphite like this. You can So you can work on both sides of the paper. Um, so overall, um, this is probably my first choice if I'm doing just graphite. Um, because the other papers can be very expensive. So if I'm doing just graphite, then this paper is very affordable. You see, this has a uh, hundred and uh, almost 200 uh, pages. Um, and I've not even gone that far in it. Just look how much I have left, you know? So it's, um, it's this is a pretty good value. Uh, this is used a lot by professionals. This is relatively expensive paper. I wouldn't start with this, but if it's within your means and you want to, you totally can. This is just a quick sketch I did on the bus of the bus. Um, this is the Legion Stonehenge uh, white paper. And um, this is just a good all around paper for people use this for graphite, for colored pencil, uh, for what have you. Uh, and this is another kind of paper that you might see. This is the same, actually this paper here is the same one that I used in this book that I made here. So this is uh, multimedia. This is uh, Strathmore multimedia paper. Let me see. Oh, I still got some blank pages on this one. So you can kind of see that it's, you know, you can use uh, watercolor paints on this. You can use water soluble pencil. You can use regular. So uh, I believe these are paints. Yes, this is watercolor paints. Um, and you can also do water soluble pencil, which is what this is. Um, and you can do uh, 
you know, graphite as well as uh, colored pencil on this paper as well. These two are both watercolor paints. Um, so there's that. And, um, and then, you know, notebooks come in spiral binding. Uh, they come in like folding like this. They also come in giant sheets. Um, and the regular size, I used the giant sheets to make this, but I also, um, you know, they came, this paper here came in like, a five by seven sheets of paper and then I just folded them over and I had the notebook so um that's just some options for paper there's so many different options for paper actually you know what I see one more here that I didn't feature here this is another one this is the this is a toned gray notebook and um usually when I started I was getting um this paper bound like this and a lot of companies will sell the same paper bound in all kinds of different ways um i got this paper bound like this uh in this uh, hardcover notebook because i was finding out that like if i made a mistake um i would just rip the paper out and i didn't want to keep doing that i wanted something that was more like forcing me to face you know my struggles and to be more honest with myself so there's that oh here goes a couple more kinds i have a lot of kinds over here this is just one continuous um it's called an accordion book so you can see this and what a lot of people do with these is they'll make just one giant painting that stretches across all the pages um and those are cool but i don't have the patience or the skill to make those uh but anyway that's it that's uh that's uh me talking about the papers so um but again you can also use the paper in this book right here so i'll give you a link down in the description of some of my favorite papers and notebooks for you to start with i i recommend getting um the spiral bound version of this paper here and i'll give a link to that i think that book is like uh i don't know it's like 120 pages or something and it's like uh i want to say like eight or nine bucks like they're you know not super expensive um and you know it, art supplies become much more expensive if you start working in like larger sizes but if you work small um then it's a lot easier and a lot less expensive on your wallet and you can also get like slightly higher quality products if you if you're willing to work small so that's the path that i took however paper also comes in ginormous sizes um i think i saw some sheets that were you know um full size sheets are i think 30 inches by 20 inches and you can work in that that level if you want there's notebooks that come in all those sizes um anyway that's it so thank you guys so much for watching i know this is the long version of the video so i appreciate you guys staying with me for the long version but i thought i would you know cover a lot of the stuff that you would need to do if you wanted to learn to draw um and take this as one of your starting points um, so let me know if you want to see more uh, books, like more videos on like how to books, because I do have a few. Um, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget for the video of the cats. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.